Alas, we have reached the final episode for now of JRPG Mechanics. So far, we have done everything that we've set out to do. We set out to create a little world map that we walk through, that we randomly have a battle in, that we have the battle, and then we return to the map. But the problem is that when we return to the map, we get thrown out randomly to the start position, which could be quite irritating for a game. And also, when we get to a second encounter, our health is magically back. So, let's sort that in today's episode. So, the first thing I'm going to do is try and deal with the health issue. And what ClickTeam has is it has objects that get created just for that frame and get deleted afterwards. And it has um, objects which are global and always there. And so, what we need to do is tell ClickTeam, look... I want this to be always there. I want it to be a global object. Well, there's a button here that says global object. Okay, how simple is that? Now, let's just try this now. So if I do application, and this is quite tedious now because I've got to do a lot of walking. And what I could do is just limit the, I could make it way quicker to go into battles. So we want him to hurt us a little bit. So we're down kind of to that health there. And let's see if we keep walking. We're going to be really lucky here. And you can see, just by clicking that global button, we're back down to where we should be. We should be about their health. And let's try and get this slime. And hopefully he'll get us all the way to the button, which he has. And how powerful is that, that you can get Click Team to either forget everything, and that's something that's useful to us here. Notice that each time his health goes all the way back up to the top. Ours doesn't, which is great. We don't want ours to, because he's a new baddie. We want his to, but we don't want ours to. And you can see it's just sort of in line with the button there. So it works perfectly. So that's another thing in Click Team. You just click once, and it's all sorted. The player's position is kind of the same. We've already got um, a player move object um, that has the, uh, where are we? Has the player's current X and Y, and the player will always snap to the current X and Y. Right. So all we need to do is go in here, or wherever it is, <laughs> and click global object. Um, now, something to point out actually, is it says editor synchronization. Basically, what some people do is they copy and paste this amongst different um, uh, frames. And this is saying, well, if it's got the same name and it's active, so if it's got the name of player move data and it's an active object, then we treat it as the same. And that can cause a few issues if you're not really careful. Um, and so you could say no. That actually you don't want that to happen and that's absolutely fine um, but just be aware of that at the start right so let's hope let's make it down to the bottom left and hopefully to the bottom right if we can I don't think I'll quite make it but we're sort of down at the bottom right here there we are wicked so we're at the bottom right so let's get rid of this slim slime I love that name slim slime Right, it's very Dragon Quest or whatever. Okay, now we're kind of at the top. That was kind of weird. <laughs> I, I kind of don't know what happened there. We kind of looked like we were at the top. So let's just investigate that as well. Because when as soon as I moved, it kind of was fine. So it could be that we're not. So we're kind of at the top there. So it looks like it's got the X right, but it hasn't got the Y right at all. But then as soon as I move, it kind of flicks down there. So it could be that our code isn't running that at the start, isn't checking that at the start. Um, so always uh, uh, here. So we need like a start of frame. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to paste that in there. I'm going to copy that and paste that in there. So I'm saying just do that at the start. Now the mini step has to be zero. 
So we're just going to get rid of that bit just in case there's a bit of mini step left over. Uh, and so we're just saying at the start of the frame, make sure to position the player in that place. And so let's do it again. And the reason why the X was right and the Y wasn't is because of the direction, the default direction the player is in. So the player now should work perfectly. Bosh. And a little bit of a pause, and there we go. Working perfectly. It's exactly where I was at the start. And let's try and get it to do it right down at the bottom right so we can be absolutely sure. There we go. Bosh, see the health is there. Bosh, bosh. Oh, just that little bit left, eh? Bosh. Player dead. And notice we're loaded the bottom left. Right, well, that is more than I wanted to do um, in this. I mean, you might think, oh, this is a bit of a rubbish game. Well, yeah, it is. It's it's the basics. It's the, the bare bones of a game. But every game starts with a bare bones. And so you can see here, this is quite a boring terrain. Well, we probably want a castle somewhere, and we want a shop, and we want items, and we want other things that that join your cause other players that join your cause and and stuff like that but unless you do the basics and unless you can do the basics unless you get the basics sorted you will never ever be able to do all that stuff so minimum viable product player that walks around a grassy place and can go into attacks now you might also um Actually, I wanted to see whether you could randomize the transition, but I don't think you can. Uh, that's something I was interested in, is um, seeing whether you could randomize the transition, um, but I don't think you can. Frame position, V-Sync. I don't know whether you could do it here, like in this editor. Uh, yeah that would be interesting is if so the transition we had here uh, if you could change that based on the terrain or based on the battle type I think maybe what you do is you would create copy and paste a new battle in or I think you can clone it and then you, you could choose the two different ones but I don't know whether you could whether you can programmatically, uh, let's delete that. I don't want two battle ones. Whether you can programmatically change the transition, um, it would be interesting to see whether you can. But I would imagine it would be in here. So frame position demo pause application no scrolling no frame effect no. Nope. Backdrop, screen, v-sync, set frame rate, set anti-aliasing when resizing, no, none of that. Yeah, that's interesting. So there's all sorts of things you can do. And if you know of a way, apart from um, creating lots of different ones, which is probably the way I would get around it, um, the reason that's not ideal is, say if there's something about the battle you want to change, so say if you don't like the trees or something, if you've got like five of them loaded, you've got a five um, frames that you've got to go through each individual one, updating it, which is not going to be ideal. A way around that is that each of the... Uh, let's see whether I can do this. Um, you can create like a frame within a frame, right? So you could have this as... I think it's like there. So you could have this as the battle frame somehow. Uh, and let's just play this yeah so it loads it's there's nothing there but this frame is basically a container that includes the battle frame and so you could call this one um, uh, what is it um, is it line transition like I'm just going to go ahead and do this why not and then we could have what, uh, so that would be the line transition so and 
we said we'd aim for about a second although you can't get it exact and we want to get rid of the transition for this so delete the transition there and then we can have the oh, well that was really cool is it advanced scrolling that's really cool and that's only cool it's only cool if it's quick no one minds a transition as long as it's quick I have like a random one why not and so this will be advanced scrolling and then this will also be the battle and then instead of that loading the frame so instead of it jumping to oh it's interesting why would it move to the add scroll transition anyway uh, so jump to frame and we can use a calculation so it's either going to be three or four yeah so it's either going to be three or four so it'd be random for two and it's three plus random two so if you want three or four you want three plus random two random two will give you either a zero or a one so it'll either be th three plus zero, which is three, or three plus one, which is four, right? I think that makes sense. So if I run the application now, <laughs> let's see whether this works. I have no idea. It might not. <laughs> and you can kind of randomize. There we are. So that's the advanced scrolling thing. So we've had an advanced scrolling thing. Instead of it being random, you could choose the like type of enemy or whatever. You could have a different transition per enemy. And there we are. So that, that's the line one. Actually, we probably should pick two completely different ones, right? Because <laughs> I can't really tell them apart. Uh, so, oh, fade. Fade will do it, right? Fade, and then transition setup um, oh the open sorry you can tell I oh I love the zigzag okay that's cool let's try that so run the application so I've got to get a fade or a zigzag and it's just gonna be random for now and we could just leave it at random random's pretty cool oh the zigzags cool I like the zigzag very RP, very JRPG, -E. JRPG. -E? Yeah, I'm gonna go for that. Uh, and then hopefully we'll get a fade. Get okay, nice. No, oh, there we go. So you can actually, there we go. We found a solution. So what you don't want to do is copy and paste stuff because if you find a mistake, you're gonna have to change it in one, two, three, four, five, six, whatever. With this little button here which I don't think I remember seeing before you can just like say well this is technically the same as frame 2 but I just want to change the transition or I want something something slightly different um, in these ones but these are effectively the same how cool is that so there we go there's another time where I've absolutely learned something new I, I completely didn't realize that you could have a frame as another frame but you might have looked at that and gone when would you ever need that why would you need to just include another frame and straight away these transitions if you can't do them in code that is an absolutely viable way that you could have a different transition based on the enemy or anything else i am really really happy for where we've got up to in this uh, in these episodes in this fortnight um, we've done an awful lot for the JRPG and you might think oh but that's not really a final JRPG of course it's not but if you were following along at home you can develop all sorts of things now with items with um, defending with having multiple characters all of that stuff and I'm probably going to come back to this either next week or in the future or whenever but I'm going to try and keep these um, uh, series to a fortnight so that you can sit and watch uh, 10 episodes and then feel like you've got somewhere with whatever we were looking at 
Um, but if you've got ideas of stuff um, that you want me to cover in the next series, please let me know as, as soon as you can um, because there is a kind of maybe a three week delay um, in me uh, in you watching these and me filming the next ones if that makes sense so I've already filmed this episode three weeks ago um, so there's a little bit of a delay there but that's okay um, otherwise like it if you like it if you want to see more from us click subscribe otherwise have a lovely weekend and I'll see you next week for a new series